Hello everyone, greetings from the 7th of Nero, AJ here, and this one will feature very little artwork, as is regrettably common for this content, and I'd say it's not my fault, but in this case, it totally is. I just had to pick up a topic that, once more, doesn't really lend itself to having representative artwork in the creator's database. The topic in question is one that is usually considered to be terrifically banal when undergoing the process of building a fictional world, especially if it's attached to a miniatures game. For the most part, the concept just exists and is, for something associated to a game like War Machine and Hordes, almost completely irrelevant to the plot, gameplay, and, depending on your perspective, the development of the very world itself. And yet, it's one of those neat little touches that, once you read these brief law within law pieces, compels an appreciation for the depth of world-building style and technique, and it sort of makes me want to read more. But anyway, this one is about the newspapers, or related periodicals and journals of the Iron Kingdoms. It appears to be a distinctly human cultural aspect, and any mention of other races here is largely by inference from their corresponding journal entries. Newspapers and journals in the Iron Kingdoms find their origins in the post-Orgoth occupation technological boom that, in due course, replaced the age-old local low-circulation handwritten newsletters, firstly with block-printed news sheets, and then with what became locally known as the broadside, a large single-sheet poster covered with pieces of news of varying reliability and delay. Its name was taken from the eponymous broadside of a warship, each article's headline being analogous to a cannon or gun port. These would, over time, evolve into publications more suitable to convenient consumption when the term broadside became interchangeable with broadsheet, as the news would continue to be tacked onto advertising boards or whatever flat surface could be found along busy roads, as well as carried and read in hand. The broadsides first appeared in Signar in roughly 572, published by the Weekly News, who became, and remain, the most widely syndicated provider of news and gossip. Their output, available from local merchants or travelling postboys for a farthing, or whatever is the equivalent of a copper piece in the local denomination. Wide reach of these broadside publications, this particular medium being the main source of news from outside the local area for most folk, made them the ideal platform for promoters to advertise their wares and services. This advertising revenue became a substantial source of income for publishers, alongside healthy sales and private or corporate sponsors in many cases. For the longest time, the weekly news held a near monopoly on news publication in Signal, and even a few areas that bordered Signal, with an addition in most major cities. But competitors would pop up every so often to offer their own manner of providing news to the masses. For the most part, these competitors struggled to maintain regular publication schedules or long print runs for increased numbers of issues that could keep them in business. However, as the technology spread and diplomatic relations deteriorated among the Iron Kingdoms, local news sheets gave rise to broadsides with near-national distribution that originated in publishers who sought to and eventually managed to rival the weekly news' reach, whether within Signal or without. What follows is a brief review of some of the more well-known periodicals that are known to cover national and international news with at least a modicum of reliability. Starting with the weekly news, as the longest-running newspaper in Signar and the Iron Kingdoms, with the state backing no less, it is almost a crown institution, but unfortunately it comports itself to be of greater importance and impact than it really is. Prone to stodgy narrative in its reportage, the weekly news has become complacent in collating information, instead displaying a tendency to focus on the minutiae of particular incidents, often dry or melodramatic storytelling with little in between, and a perception of disproportionate publishing of the supposed and alleged as opposed to the actual. While they are careful to represent their pieces in such a way as to be as accurate as possible, incidences of counter language that indicate lack of confirmation are all too common. And such is the opinion the weekly news has of itself, reporters working for them have a tendency to praise their own reputation and denigrate other newspapers by broad strokes. Elsewhere among publishers in Signal, one can find the Mercia Messenger, otherwise known as the mouthpiece for the Mercarian League, the largest trading conglomerate in the kingdom and continent. As a result, they concentrate very strongly on any events that impact on international trade, in particular shipping routes. Unsurprisingly, they also display a virulent hatred for pirates to the point of offering bounties as part of their publication, and report on any cooperation between the League, the Signaran Navy, and any joint interests. In terms of following the more mundane of activities of the Mercarian League, the Mercia Messenger is one of the only newspapers to be able to report, first-hand, events concerning the zoo, including the first encounters with them in 596. Another well-known Signorin paper, 
if more local and of more ill repute, is the Corvus Chronicle, shortened from the Corvus Chronicle Weekly Dispatch, a sensationalist rag that is known more for stirring conspiracy theories than reporting events. The Corvus Chronicle presents its news in as dramatic a fashion as it can to shock its readers and set their tongues wagging. Said news is often tangential at best to current affairs or obviously make-believe at worst. While this particular broadside is published by a nominally independent organisation and funded by certain corners of the Corvus Merchants Guild, its content can be easily explained by noting that one of their biggest backers is the Gertens family. To clarify, that's the Gertens gang, which is how most would recognise that name. They would publish anything if it helped knock their rivals the Griffins down a notch or two. Signar and diplomatic affairs be damned. Away from Signar, the most widely distributed broadsides published in both Cador and the Protectorate of Menoth are nationalistic to the point of theatricality, if in different ways and for different reasons, but they are all, needless to say, thoroughly self-serving and self-aggrandizing. The Corsic Correspondent is a prime example. Indeed, they are all prime examples, but no matter. In recent years, the Corsic Correspondent has done all it can to justify the imperialistic ambitions of the Cadoran ruling establishments. In particular, its administration of occupied Lael, while taking every opportunity to insult or decry Signar and free Lael in any way it can, going about it with all the apparent subtlety of a mounted Iron Fang Ulan trying to discreetly tail a Signaran reconnaissance service agent. It appears as though the main purpose of the course correspondent is to offer continual acclaim to the Cape Doran army. In this endeavour, it is obviously successful, which is curious given its supposedly official position, which denies any affiliation or association with High Command and Starzikov Palace. Instead, the paper deflects any connections, noting that Gvernorsk Press, the publisher, is simply staffed by proud Kadorans. And though it is a much smaller institution than its on-land counterpart, the Kadoran Navy also has a propaganda piece, albeit an official one, called the Vladivar Broadsheet, named for the Navy's home port and published by Gnezdo Press, whose output mirrors the course correspondent in its patriotic verve, opening every issue with an obsequious dedication to the Navy's personnel, followed by a repetitive cry of All hail Empress Ein Venar, strength to the motherland, and so on and so forth. Content is typically related to the Navy's dealings against Cador's southern neighbours, spinning the mundane into magnificent for high command needs, or squeezing glory out of unprovoked and one-sided skirmishes. Neither the Vladivar broadsheet nor the course correspondent particularly care who they offend, provided it is all in service to the motherland. However, Cador is not immune to more subversive competition when it comes to newspapers. A short-lived periodical headquartered in lately conquered Laidry was circulated by and among Umbrian secessionists prior to the movement's quashing. Called the Internal New Umbrian Revolutionary Organization, firebrand separatists angry with the invasion of Lael and the continued imposition of Cadoran rule, whether military or cultural, over Umbri sought to stoke unrest in that Velozg. It reported, amongst other things, the successes of its agents in disrupting the actions of the Kaidoran army, and even negotiating with protectorate leaders, though its efforts would ultimately come to nothing. Speaking of the protectorate, their biggest publication is probably the Emir Proclamation. Without a doubt, just as blinkered as the course correspondent, the Emir Proclamation does a good job of twisting events to the Synod of Vizgoth's preferences for public consumption. To cite a notorious example, both the aforementioned broadsides published articles pertaining to a Kedoran Menite priest, one Vasco Gohanovich, who was dispatched as a diplomat. As these headlines would suggest, someone clearly made free with the truth. Even through this, the two broadsides are similar in representing their nation's armies as heroes, one and all. The Emir proclamation, somewhat predictably, does tend towards more religious terminology when either insulting anything that gets in the way of the protectorate's crusades or offering praise to the faithful. This is continually instanced by its oft-seen praise, which turns the newspaper into an overblown declaration for tests of faith and piety. The voice of Saul, not so much a competitor but a companion piece to the Emir proclamation, is hardly any better, prone to purple prose and gleeful mockery of the protector its enemies with minimal provocation. The voice of Saul is petty vindictiveness in newspaper form. Unfortunately for the put-upon Leolis, the voice expanded its portfolio after the conquests of the Northern Crusade with a new edition called The Voice of Lerin, which continues the voice of Saul's tradition of disdaining the unbelievers and worshipping the dirt on the Hierarch's boots. Running counter to the publications of both the Protectorate and Cador, at least where Lael is concerned, is the Ridden Beacon, 
stoutly anti-Kadoran, but also fairly anti-protectorate. The Ridden Beacon is a more or less counter-propaganda news sheet that hopes to restore Lely's territorial integrity at the very least. It follows the actions of patriotic Lely's in their struggle against foreign rule, no matter which one that may be as well as developments by said foreign powers against what remains a free lail. Funded in majority by East Forest Lumber and the Delrive family, the Ridden Beacon is in effect the official resistance broadside, given how, for an important period of the modern era, Free Lail's resistance council was led by Gregor Delrive IV. Finally, Ord also has its share of new serials, and, perhaps more than their counterparts across the Iron Kingdoms, they display a distinctly measured character, a reflection of their nation's status on the international stage, being a local power but generally adverse to a confrontation with their neighbours if they can at all help it. As a naval power continually menaced by Crixian raiders and Cadoran accidents, the Ordic people can read related events in the Shipman's Tower, which is the Ordic equivalent to the Signar and Mercia messenger, concentrating on the trade and shipping news relevant to Ord and her economy, and by association, her navy's exploits. While not as rabid towards them as their Signaran counterpart, the Shipman's Tower still displays a certain disapproval of piracy, whether local or general. Nevertheless, they provide credit where it is due and acknowledge not only the status of pirates as a lesser enemy when compared to Cricks, but also that the Makarian League of Signal, one should hasten to add, rarely has Ord's best interests in mind. And last of all on this quick far review is the Audic Observer, or Audic Observer Weekly Dispatch in full. This newspaper is perhaps the most neutral of every major periodical published in the Iron Kingdoms. Published by Oaken Press out of Midfast, the Audic Observer covers mainly regional news, but they have a reputation for accurate reporting of news from further abroad. Though the loyalty of its contributors is obvious, they nonetheless report events in a balanced and pragmatic manner. Without judgment, except against critics, without drama, and without censure in one way or another, even if they should express concern at such things as Kedoran encroachment in Audic territories, for it is only natural. Like the weekly news, they take care to note instances when their information is incomplete or unverified, but a key difference is that they do not make them a preponderance. The result is that the Audic Observer is arguably both the easiest to interpret from a fact-finding perspective and the most reliable source of news for its readership, making its disclaimer, which details its lack of political and financial affiliations, actually believable. And there we go, a selection of newspapers to suit every taste, perhaps apart from Infernalist. <laughs>